Hey everybody, Ben, Somerville Gardener. And today I'm going to be pushing my microclimate, or at least measuring for it, with all the different tropical plants that I have, and I'm trying to zone push a few of them. I've been wondering just how it is that you make a microclimate and then, you know, what can I do to increase its performance, I guess? And I guess one of the most important factors is, what exactly are my temperatures? So what I've done is I've gone out to Amazon, purchased two really cheap options for thermometers, for wireless sensing my outdoor temperatures. And seriously, these are not expensive things. They were both around $25 for a remote station and three different sensors. They both have some different options, some different uh, things that they do. I'm sure they come with some different stuff as well. So I'm gonna be checking out both of these thermometers, getting them set up in paired locations, just so I can compare the different base stations or the different thermometers that are outside just to make sure that they're both accurate to each other. And all this is going to give me two different base stations with six different locations that I can monitor outside and hopefully a healthy understanding of what my little microclimates are around my yard so that I can then measure them and see what I can do to increase their wintertime performance. I'm not so much concerned with summertime performance for any of them because all these tropical plants that I have should be fine. They each have their little watering requirements and whatever for the summer, but it's the wintertime performance that I'm really going to be concerned about. Let's go ahead and take a look at these two different options and see what we got. So here are the two different devices that I've chosen for this experiment. The first one I'm going to go over is the Givon wireless thermometer with three sensors. It's got a monochrome display, three remote sensors. I think it displays the temperature even on the remote sensor, which is pretty cool. There's the model number for it right there. And the second one is a no name. Uh, it doesn't really say what it is. It's got some product specs. I think they just kind of rebox somebody else's stuff. It may or may not. I thought I had selected ones that did have the, the display uh, on each one of the sensors. I'm not sure. We'll have, we'll have to double check it, I guess. But it's got a color display, which I thought was pretty cool. And both of these were around $25. And my apologies initially for not having a table or anything to set this up on. Uh, I'm still a little bit low rent here on this new YouTube channel. All right, so this is the Givon. I got some uh, instruction manuals. Here is the display unit. And there's going to be the three sensors. And it looks like they're labeled one, two, and three. Very cool. It doesn't look like they came with any batteries, which is unfortunate because it's going to take a lot of batteries. A little thank you for buying a card. In case you have any trouble, contact us, I'm sure is what it says. And in the back, kind of as I expected, a little selector switch for one, two, and three. Looks like it takes uh, AAA batteries. All right, let's go find us. Let's see, there's going to be six batteries there. This takes two AA batteries, so six AAAs and two AA's. So that might be a little bit of a, an added expense with this was supposed to be the cheaper one. And it looks like this guy has a uh, little nail hanger, screw hanger on the back, a little prop stand here, a couple of buttons. Uh, I'm not gonna get into how to work this whole thing because that's not the point of this video. Just doing a general compare and how I'm setting up my microclimate monitors. All right, next we have the colorful No Name brand. One thing I'm seeing right out the bat is there's a wire, interesting, USB-C wire, and it comes with batteries, already a perk and a bonus of this one. So we got three triple A's, uh, here's some double A's, and here's a couple sensors, a few sensors, and the main unit, and some more batteries. Now we got the instructions of how to use it. The main display, which already has a pretty little picture on it. Hopefully that's not all the color and the rest of it's monochrome, although I wouldn't be surprised if it said, ooh, this is color, and then it's just a ink. <laughs> but cute little display. Uh, again, nail or screw hanger, and a little flip out stand does have some little uh, doodads on the side. Oh, it looks like it's got a DC 5 volt input. That's pretty cool. That way you can plug it into a charger and not need the batteries, hopefully, or maybe. Let's see what we got next. These sensors, these three sensors, uh, looks like they do have the display on them. Very cool. And pop open the back and there's some buttons and looks like there's a Selector switch for channels one, two, and three, a transmit button, probably to pair this to the base unit, and a Celsius Fahrenheit button. So you can actually switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Another bonus if you need that sort of a thing. Looks like each of these sensors takes double A's where the other ones took triple A's. And my guess is the three triple A's are gonna go in here. So it looks like they got them switched between uh, what kind of batteries take on the display and the, uh, the main unit. Interesting little differences. I'm gonna go ahead and get batteries into everything and power them up and see how they work. So the first one is going to be the uh, the Givon, of course. Got all the batteries in it. Everything looks like it synced just fine. Everything's looking good. I've clicked through some buttons. It's got some 
memory features here for the maximum, minimum, and current temperatures for everything. And everything seems to be working pretty well. For this next one, the no-name, again, uh, everything appears to be working pretty well. It's got you know, the minimum, maximum, or maximum, minimum, and current temperature is just the same. Uh, it's easy to switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit right here. And all the sensors appear to be going okay, except for the channel number. So channel one, yep, that's right. Channel two, yep, that appears right. Channel three, channel three is not reading what the sensor is reading. And then I looked and noticed over there at my GVON, that channel three is what's being displayed on this thing's channel three number. So it looks like they're sharing the frequencies. And it's one of the reasons why I got two different brands was so that hopefully they wouldn't be using the same frequencies. But it looks like my channel three sensor here and that channel three sensor over there on the GVON are using the same frequency. So that's not good. Otherwise, everything appears to be on both units within a half a degree of all the sensors. Although the GVON's reading an average of about 87.0. So your 870, 870, and 86.9. And this is 87.9, 87.4, and 88.3. So it might be off by my hand also. But there's a slight difference of less than a degree between the two units. Again, these aren't scientific measurements. They're not calibrated perfectly. It's not what you expect for a $25 thermometer. This is good enough for what we're doing. Or good enough except for the fact that, uh, yeah, it appears as if I've got a sensor frequency problem. So I'm going to click through the frequencies, see if I can reset those a little bit, or if there's anything that I can do to put them on a different channel, maybe. I don't know. Otherwise, it looks like I'm only going to have five sensors instead of six. So that kind of stinks. So for the next part of this video, I'm going to do a little arts and crafts. So for my arts and crafts, you might ask, what am I doing? I've got a hot glue gun right here. And I went down to Play It Again Sports, got some uh, disc golf discs, white, of course. Uh, just three random ones, and if I decide that this doesn't work or whatever, then I've got extra discs for playing some disc golf. Bonus. Hmm. And besides, they were 10 bucks. What do, you, what do you expect? I'm gonna try and hot glue these and balance them real nice on some stakes to give it a little bit of shade, and then hopefully it doesn't resonate some of that heat so I get a decently accurate temperature out in the sun. And now it's arts and crafts time, because I believe this is nice and gooey hot. All right. First thing I'm gonna do is take one of these garden stakes. Uh, I think it's about six feet long, and I'm gonna put a big old goo ball right in the middle of, uh, let's go with the magician. Put a big old goo ball right here in the middle of this. There we go. Nice big goo ball. I want to make sure that good and gooey. Then I'm just going to set this thing right inside of it. Give it a little spin maybe even. Make sure it's good and centered. And now the fun part. Making sure this thing is extra gooey. Because I don't want this thing to come off. And because hot glue is cheap. Make a nice little blob of it around there. Now I'm going to try and wait for this thing to cool, dry. Whatever it is this thing does. Even though it's like... 90 degrees outside. Let's see here, I got a thermometer here, what does it say? 88 degrees outside. This may take a minute. Okay, it's been many minutes. Uh, it's starting to turn a bit opaque. Looks like it's gonna stick. Go ahead and flip this thing around, and it looks kind of like that. Ooh, isn't that special? I'm just gonna stick this in the ground and make the next two. All right, well, this is interesting. So, got them all three glued up there. Let's go ahead and give them just a little bit more time to finish curing or hardening or drying or whatever it is that hot glue does. But on to the next little part of this fun little experiment. Okay, so I've got temperature sensors number one for the GVON and the No Name, and as I'm looking at them, they are exactly one degree off. And it seems to be pretty consistent that the GVON is within 0.4 degrees from the base station and all the receivers when sitting right next to each other, within 0.4 degrees difference. And the No Name is within about 0.7 degrees difference from the base station in all four. I did manage to get them working on different channels. I just had to separate them a little bit further and then they started picking up the right sensor. Hopefully this works, but I'm gonna go ahead and put one with one, two with two, three with three. So I'm not sure if that's going to mess up both base stations recording the same temperature from only one sensor. Uh, so I might have to figure that out at a later date when I go to spread these things out around the yard. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put both of these and just sandwich them around the pole with a couple zip strips. That way they're in the shade, they've got good airflow, and hopefully they don't cook out in the sun. We're gonna find out. Now let's see how easy this is to sandwich and wrap. Make a sandwich wrap. Yep, looks like the Harbor Freight 11 inch ties will work just fine. Make sure that both sensors are about the same level. 
and tighten her down. All right, Viola. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this to the other two sensors. So I've got sensors one, two, and three sandwiched together. That way I can compare to make sure that everything's on the up and up uh, for each location. Then I'll split them out for a different video when I'm going around and actually measuring my microclimates. Ooh, and check out what I just saw. We got ourselves a milkweed assassin bug. I love my assassin bugs. Go get some uh, good grub. Those are good predator bugs right there. Okay, so I think I finally got all six of these things working right. What I did was I took the no-name one, I took the batteries out of it and all three of its transmitters. I then reset all of the, the G-Von ones uh, to it. Everything worked great. Left it here, took the other three sensors and the no-name display, drove it about a mile away just to make sure. Connected all three of the, or the three sensors batteries and this to reset all of it to like factory. And then it read all three of them just fine. Great. Brought it back and we now have, I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but we have six different temperatures for the uh, exterior sensors. I'm gonna go ahead and place these three out in different locations. Uh, my three little microclimate test locations for definitely getting in direct sun, definitely getting some good mixes of sun and shade, and then the third one in almost shade all the time, just to see what our differences are. Okay, so our first pizza pie that we're putting out is gonna be over here on the very sunny, very hot. I really hope this microclimate makes it uh, through the winter to bake all these things all winter long. This is my, I am trying real hard to make stuff grow here. Definitely in the sun, definitely in the rocks. It's gonna be hot. This is our hot. We'll call it zone one. And it is now sitting right there in between my ruby red guava and uh, the key lime. And I bet you that thing's already cooking right about now. Oh yeah, 101.6. So yeah, it's hot over here. It's in the shade, it's got a little, it's got a little frisbee shade on it. Hopefully that's helping. Uh, yeah, that is definitely in the shade, but I don't know what good it's gonna do. On to zone two, or half and half zone. We're gonna put it uh, in the middle of some bananas. And that looks like a nice shady, cool-ish spot. Uh, it should stay sh pretty shady in here all day long. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, I thought I had that in there a little bit further, but uh, yeah, it's in there, it's in the shade. It'll stay up. Let's go on to zone number three, the shady zone, like the really, really shady zone. You know, I wonder if I should put the sun and shade over on the other bananas. Hmm. Huh. That's an experiment for another day, I guess. Okay, zone three, over by the air conditioner. And this corner right here, it is definitely high noon of the sunniest, sunny part of the day. This is going to go right back in the corner where it's even now, yep, it's shady back there in that corner. But that is, in the wintertime, the coldest of cold corners and the coldest corner of the yard. So we got to know what that temperature is when it's coldest of the cold. Cold, yeah. That one might need a little bit of, uh, I don't know, support or something because that is some hard, hard sandy soil over there. Like, really bad. Let me get away from the, the A10 air conditioner over here. Whew, that's loud. It's really new. I don't know why it's so loud. There it is over there in that corner. I think I might have to like cut or strap or do something to make sure that that thing stays because that thing can't be more than maybe five or six inches in the soil. It's not in there very well. And it's, I can already see it's starting to lean and teeter. So I might have to dress that up, fix it up just a little bit. But we should be able to then see in the shadiest of shady, shady spots, how cool it gets when it's cool and when it's hot. Uh, but yeah, this first part of the experiment, we're just really trying to see our accuracy areas and just kind of compare side by side for the two different thermometers. And at the end of the experiment, we're still gonna split them up though. Be right back in a few days. Well, it has been far more than just a couple days, but that's good because I think I've learned quite a lot about these two thermometers that I can share with you now. And it has been, ooh, over a month. I even shaved once. Hmm. So one of the big things that I learned with these two thermometers and uh, Shameless plug for a future video that's going to be coming in about ginger. Uh, the temperature sensors, as you can see here, they are now identical yet again. One of the things that I noticed is that both of these sensors seem to be working on the same frequency. So while they will stay pretty well separated with the g -Von, sticks with the g -Vons, and the no-names sticks with the no-names. Oddly enough, it seems that any sort of weather storm, electrical storm specifically, seems to interfere with the radio transmissions or something and they'll start favoring one sensor over the other. And it's a real pain when I'm trying to separate these things when they're on the same pole to try and 
separate them back again. So I think ultimately I'm just going to stick with one or the other or just stick it with three sensors and keep the other three sensors as backups. But some of the things that I did notice is uh, we'll start with the no name here. The no name, a, a very nice display. It's really easy to see the inside and outside temperatures. The storm display right here is let me see if I can get a reflection out of there. So the storm display right here is oddly accurate. I, I kind of like knowing that, hey, there might be some rain coming. I noticed that the accidental touches to the top of this to turn the light on and off, while somewhat irritating at times, it's actually kind of nice to be able to, when it's dark, to be able to see what it is inside and out. Not that I'm checking my thermometer that much at night, but in the wintertime, that may come in handy as I'm trying to see just how cold it gets in the middle of the night. The Givon sensor here is a, a very nice sensor. It displays everything correctly. Uh, everything seems to be working fine on it as well. Uh, it's just a simple one, two, three display in the inside. It's not separated at all. And when it comes to the sensors, the one thing that I noticed more than anything is that the Givon sensors just seem to work better, faster, quicker, I guess is the best way to explain that. When a storm th comes through and you can kind of feel like, oh, hey, it's getting cooler. I'd see that the Givon sensors, oh yeah, they're ticking down real quick. Where the no-name sensors, they weren't quite as responsive. It would take them a fair amount longer in time to re either register the change or to, to display the difference, I guess. I'm not sure if there's like a, a different material that can be used to register the, the temperature increases and decreases. They were just less responsive to drastic shifts in cooling down or warming up. One of the other changes that I had to do was switch my part sun, part shade from the bananas that are over here on the side of the yard here. And you may be able to see that these bananas have grown up a fair amount since you saw them a few minutes ago in the last video. I wasn't able to get the bean pole shoved down on the ground very well and it kept falling over. So I had to move it from this cluster of bananas over to the other side of the yard where I put it in between really big banana right here and that pear tree that's right there. It was pretty well shaded there and it might actually have a better chance of getting sun and shade in that location. My full sun area over here stayed as it was just from the beginning of the video. I even managed to finish the little planter ring right there. Looks much nicer. The full shade location did tip over a few times and I ended up just kind of leaving it over there in the corner. It seems to be just fine. It's not completely leaning up against the fence, oddly enough, but it stays full shade as intended. And so the second secondary location ended up being back over here. And one of the final things I'm gonna note is you see the G-Von sensor right here it says 96.4 degrees. And if I spin it around over here, you'll see that it's 96.8 on the no name. And that's honestly what I found is that eventually, as long as it sits there long enough, the no name and the Givon sensors will both register pretty much the same. And it just takes that no name sensor a little bit longer to register. So hopefully one of the things that I'll be able to learn here in the next few months, unfortunately, as the temperatures will dip down a little bit cooler when it comes to the wintertime months, I'll be using these three different sensor locations to monitor my different microclimates to see what the different temperatures are. And hopefully it'll allow me to start finding new ways to create heat pockets so that I can grow more tropical plants overnight through the colder nights and not have any issues with, well, my tropical plants succumbing to the cold that probably means that they shouldn't be growing here. But of course, like any other gardener, I want to push my zones. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Make sure you keep your thumbs green, pests away, and know that you are appreciated. There's another pile of wood chips.